Let me get this thing out of my pants for you. Oh, things I keep in my pants. Really big, really long, kind of stiff. In case you couldn't tell, you've tuned in to the bone rack once again. This time I'm covering something out of my personal collection, Subspecies. The complete series. This is a set of DVDs and uh, it comes from Full Moon Entertainment. I've mentioned them before because I covered the Puppet Master series and that's what I'm doing here. I am covering the Subspecies series. I'm just going to do a quick overview of this whole series. At some point I am actually going to fully review the first Subspecies movie but the rest of them maybe not so much. So Many moons ago, I had an opportunity when I was at an old bookstore, and uh, they had all these on VHS, and I didn't buy them. I should have, but that was around the time when uh, VHS was going out, DVD was coming in. So what happened is I just didn't buy them. I think they were asking for five bucks a pop. I probably could have sold them for a lot more money these days. One thing I've mentioned about these box sets before is they tend to not have like very interesting discs you know like it's just it says subspecies subspecies two three and then the last one is vampire journals which is just an uh an off movie like it's a spin-off from it it's sort of semi-related to subspecies and that is that's it i think decadent evil is in some way related to subspecies as well so first and foremost the most important thing is that radu the main vampire in here is played by Anders Hove. Why do I like this series of, sub of vampire movies so much? The answer is, okay, you've seen Interview with the Vampire. You've seen, well, I hope you haven't, but probably. You've seen the Twilight series. And the thing about these movies is the vampires are always beautiful, handsome men. They look healthy. This motherfucker is ugly. Ugly as shit. This is like more into the Nosferatu realm. More into what I figure an actual vampire would probably look like. And also, I've mentioned that I like stop motion. And there is some stop motion in the first movie, and it's really good stop motion. So maybe I'll just go down the back here and give you the brief of whatever one of these movies is. So the first subspecies movie. Three young students studying the folklore of Transylvania uncover an ancient clan of vampires ruled by the sadistic, notorious Radu. That's a cool vampire name. Side note. We all know about Vlad Dracula. The real Vlad Dracula. Right? In real life, in real his history, Vlad Dracula did have a brother, and his brother's name was Radu. It's an interesting point there. Okay, back to what's going on here. Uh, Radu becomes obsessed with making them his fledglings. He basically wants to turn them into his fledgling vampires. Really, he wants to turn one into his fledgling vampire because he falls in love with them. Because that's how vampires are. They're dead people with a lot of romance in their hearts, I guess. I don't know. Subspecies number two, Radu's fledgling Michelle. Ah, yes, that's right. So in the first movie, this lady, Michelle, becomes Radu's fledgling. In the second movie, it's a completely different actress that plays her. And that is something that tends to happen with Full Moon Entertainment movies. If you go back to the Puppet Master series, you'll know that Andre Toulon is played by a number of different people, not always the same guy. So, And I guess that's just a budgetary thing, or somebody makes a movie with Full Moon Entertainment and realizes, oh, I'm ashamed of myself, this crappy horror movie, so they don't want to do it ever again. It's possible. Maybe working with Charles Band is a bad thing, although this is a... Uh, well, no, Charles Band is involved in this. So maybe they don't like working with Charles Band. Maybe they don't like working with Ted Nicolau. I think it's Charles Band. I don't know. I don't want to talk shit about the guy, but there's been stories. They're not my stories. I never met him, so I'm going to stay neutral on the subject. Anyways, Radu's fledgling Michelle flee flees from his castle with the holy relic, the Bloodstone, and struggles with her emerging bloodlust while hiding in the basement of a theater in Bucharest, waiting for her sister to arrive from the U.S. to help her. All right, so that was uh, subspecies to the Bloodstone. The Bloodstone, incidentally, 
continues to bleed forever and it makes people super strong. Um, in one of these movies, you have Angus Scrim, and uh, he plays Radu's father, I believe. Just something to throw out there. Angus Scrim, also known as a tall man from Phantasm, a series I've also covered on this channel. Moving over to subspecies 3, Bloodlust. Okay. Radu kidnaps Michelle back to the castle that he shares with his sorceress mother and teaches her to master her vampire powers, sacrificing everything in his obsession for her. While Michelle's sister mounts an armed assault on his stronghold. I thought for a second it was going to say, well, Michelle's sister mounts Radu. I think your sister mounts somebody in that movie. Moving on. Subspecies 4, Bloodstorm. See, here's where I think it kind of loses. The first three movies sort of carry the same story and the same characters, even though the actors change. The third movie is, you know, I guess it says his fledgling Michelle is back again. So really, it's not really the story of Radu. It's the story of Radu and Michelle that they take four movies to tell. It kind of sounds like I'm talking shit about these movies right now, but I actually really do like them. And mostly I like Anders Hove and his presence as Radu. And I've mentioned that a bunch of times on this channel that I like a screen presence. Uh, it's something that jumps through the screen and gets you. Not everybody has it. And every once in a while you pick the right person for the right character. If if anyone else played Radu other than Anders Hove, I don't think it would be that good. That's, you know, that's putting a lot of weight on one actor and one that plays one character. But hey, that's how I feel about it. Back to what I'm reading here. Subspecies 4. Bloodstorm. I'm going to embarrass myself by trying to read this one more time. The vampire Radu returns to Bucharest in pursuit of his headstrong fledgling, fledgling Michelle. Yeah, I guess at this point she becomes um, like a super vampire and just as evil as him. I don't remember. Should I really be talking about these movies if I don't remember them? Yeah, because I won't spoil them and I'm trying to encourage you to go and see them. Okay, back to it. He reclaims his underground stronghold from Ash, a powerful vampire who mingles with the world of mortals while he devises a way into the secret clinic where Michelle is being held by evil Dr. Nicolescu. Okay. So now Radu is trying to save his fledgling. Good for him. He's a hero now? He kidnaps her, sucks her blood, kills her. He keeps her as a slave, um, I guess until she has Stockholm Syndrome, and then uh, he goes to save her. It's a uh, modern romance, isn't it? And then we have the Vampire Journals. And the Vampire Journals is just a spin-off. And we'll just read that one. A 19th century vampire on his quest to destroy the, vampire, the vampires of his bloodline comes to modern-day Bucharest to battle the Vampire Master Ash. See, there's the connection to subspecies. Ash is in subspecies 4 as well as the Vampire Journals. Now, uh, yeah, in the uh, Vampire Journals, the music lover Ash is the head of vampires. Isn't that... I mean, that sounds like it's borrowing right from Interview with a Vampire because, you know, the guy is a musician. You know, the main vampire, Lestat. Incidentally, uh, Stuart Townsend, a lot better Lestat than Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise finds his way into good movies and he's... Yeah, he shits them up a bit. He's like a... He's like a fart. You know what I mean? Like, the whole, the movie's good, and then Tom Cruise is there, and it kind of just ruins the vibe. Legend? Why? Interview with a vampire? Why? Tom Cruise is good when he plays intense roles, but he fucks up Legend, and he stinks up Interview with a vampire, but... Whatever. I digress. Back to subspecies. So, I read the synopsis of the movies. I've showed you the fancy DVD I have with all the fun DVDs that are in it. And now I'm going to encourage you to go online and watch these movies. I believe you can find them at Tubi TV. Tubi TV has an area that says Full Moon Features, which is all movies by Full Moon Entertainment. You should be able to find this there. Um... Overall, I think they're mostly good movies. Like I said, I'm going to give you a full review of the first subspecies movie. I'm just going to watch it again and, um, you know, remember it so I can be a little more uh, in-depth about it. But other than that, they're pretty good movies. 
I'm just using this time in this video to maybe open you up to something you might not have heard of, and that is a subspecies. In my opinion, Radu is one of the better movie vampires, and that's because he's ugly, rotten, decaying vampire, and he's not this he's not this handsome, beautiful man, Tom Cruise fucking vampire. Because I think in real life, if you met a vampire, maybe they wouldn't be so pretty. Just thinking, someone who's been around for a few hundred years, sleeping in a coffin, might smell a bit. It'd be kind of rotting. This has been The Bone Rack. I am your host, the guy from The Bone Rack. Please like and subscribe. I do these videos because I have a passion for horror. I hope you have a passion for horror as well. Share these videos. Um, introduce some of your friends to these videos, and I can then introduce them to some movies maybe they've never seen before. Thumbs up, thumbs down, like and subscribe. We will see you next time on The Bone Rack.